All right, everybody. Hey, uh, thank you all for joining in uh, to our weekly youth meeting. Uh, so good to see you all. So good to see you all. Um, I hope you're all doing well, staying safe. Um, let's get started. Uh, Sam, please uh, start us off with a word of prayer, if you will. And JP will uh, take over for worship. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this evening, Lord, thank you for this amazing privilege, Lord, of just coming together, Lord, as your children, Lord. I pray right now, Lord, that we would give you our worship, Lord. As you seek the earth, I pray, Lord, that our hearts would give you what you deserve, Lord. Holy Spirit, I just pray, Lord, that you would encounter each person, Lord, in this evening. Wherever we are from, whatever thoughts we are carrying, whatever burdens we are carrying in our hearts, I pray, Lord, that as we worship you, as we listen to your word, I pray, Lord, that you would encounter us, Lord, in a way uh, like never before, Lord. I pray for that kind of an expectation, Lord, this evening. We just thank you once again. We just submit everything to your throne of grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Over to JP. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good to see all of you. Good evening. Uh, there's a huge rain here, so in case you, you feel like there's a network in, network issue, just continue worshiping, okay? <laughs> Till motion takes over. Right? Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I'm just reading from Micah chapter seven, verse seven. Before we start, Micah chapter seven, verse seven. But as for me, I will watch expectantly for the Lord. I will wait for the Lord of my salvation. But as for me, I will watch expectantly for the Lord. I will wait for the Lord, God of my salvation. My God will hear me. I just want to encourage each one of us. Even if you feel like you are in a season of waiting, let's continue to, serve, to seek God. Continue to search His heart. And you know what? Even as we wait expectantly for the Lord, He will come through. And He will change our impossibilities and He will make it to possibilities. He will turn our mourning into dancing. There will be a shift in your life. I just want to encourage each one of us. Even if you feel you're so tired of praying, you're so tired of asking God what is happening, I just want to encourage you. As you continue to wait on the Lord, He will turn your situations. Let's wait on the Lord uh, this evening, even as we start worshiping Him. Let's go ahead and tell Him how much how much the life is for you. If it is hard, just be open. Tell Him, Lord, it's very hard for me right now. I need your help. If it is going okay, then tell him, thanks, Lord. Thank you for giving a smooth life. Let's wait on the Lord and let's be very expectant this evening. Come, Lord Jesus, we welcome you. We welcome your presence. We welcome your glory. Come and have your way in our midst. We wait eagerly for your presence. We wait eagerly for your presence. Touch our hearts. Change our circumstances. Mm, I come alive in your presence. I come alive in your presence, Lord. I come alive in your presence because you're so good to me. I come alive from the ashes because your word is true. Let's sing this song together. You might know this song. Come alive, come walk in my counsel. Come alive, come walk in my way. Come alive, come soak in my presence, light and life, 
pure delight. Come alive, come walk in my concept. Come alive, come walk in my ways. Come alive, come soak in my presence. Light and light, pure delight. Bursting forth when life unending, breathing. In your love, your love bursting forth with life unending, breathing in your love, your love. I believe I'm rooted by the river, drinking deep from life giving streams in your truth. Stand and shake I'm alive, I'm alive. I believe I'm rooted by the river, drinking deep from life giving streams in your truth. I stand and shake your word is my delight. I'm alive, I walk in your counsel. I'm alive, I walk in your ways. I'm alive, I soak in your presence. You're my life, my delight. Let's sing that again. I'm alive, I walk in your counsel. I'm alive, I walk in your ways I'm alive, I soak in your presence You're my life, my delight Bursting forth with life unending Breathing in your love, your love Bursting forth with life unending, breathing in your love, your love. I believe I'm rooted by the river, drinking deep from life, giving your truth. I stand and shake I'm alive, I'm alive I believe I'm rooted by the river Drinking deep from life-giving streams In your truth, I stand and shake Your word is my delight I believe I believe I'm rooted by the river, drinking deep from life giving streams in your truth. I stand and shake I'm alive, I'm alive. I believe I'm rooted by the river, drinking deep from life giving Shaking, your word is my delight. Your word is my delight. Yes, Lord, we come alive in your presence because we know that your word is so powerful. Your word is living and active. It can pierce even to the bone marrow and even to the marrow and the bone of God. It is so powerful to create things in our lives, Lord. So tonight we pray and ask for God that let your word pierce into our hearts, O God. Every dry situation we command to come alive. Mm -hmm. I believe through the by the river, drinking deep from life giving streams in your truth 
I stand unshaken. Your word is my delight. Your word is my delight. Sin runs deep. Your grace is more. Your grace is found. Is where you where you are Lord I am free holiness in Christ in me let me sing that again when sin runs see your grace is small your grace is found is where you and where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you, my one defense, my right. Righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest without you. Oh God, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Can we mean those words, guys? Without you, I fall apart. I cannot take even a single step without your presence, oh God. In every moment of our life, I need you, Jesus. Every moment of my life, I need you. Let me sing that again. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Lord, I need Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. And Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than. Diamonds 
and nothing I desire compares with you, and nothing I desire compares with you. Let's sing that again. Oh. pray God we need more of you Jesus you are our only defense you are our righteousness God and you enable us to stand before your presence with true heart and true conscience oh God and we can stand before your presence with true conscience because you have washed up sins clean complete oh God your grace is more to us tonight and we receive it oh God and we love you more than anything. We love you more than anything. We keep you as our priority, O oh God, tonight. And nothing we desire compares with you, O oh God. You are the most wanted thing in our life, O oh God. And we, we receive your presence tonight. Lord, we submit each one of us to your hands and ask, O oh God, reveal more of yourself to us. Help us to know you a little more better tonight, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And nothing I desire compares with you. Amen. Amen. Yes, Father, we, we thank you. We acknowledge what you're doing in our midst. I just feel like uh, the Lord wants to remind us uh, this time and time again in the scriptures, the Lord says, I have not forgotten you, Israel. I have not forgotten you. I have not forgotten you. Um, and I believe that just that the Lord is trying to remind us once again that he is a God who sees and hears and that he has not forgotten you. Um, whatever, whatever it is that you've been waiting on um, for a breakthrough, um, a miracle, um, whatever it is, um, or just a general reminder is that uh, he sees you and uh, he has not forgotten you for he has carved you in the palm of his hands. Um, the Lord who sustains the whole universe in the span of his hands sustains you. Um, he has not forgotten you. And I believe that's, uh, I just feel like the Lord wants to remind some of us um, tonight. And so, Father, we, we thank you, Lord. We just want to pause and before we move on, want to acknowledge your greatness, your awesomeness. We don't want to take for granted your presence, Lord, your mercy, your kindness in our lives. We don't want to take for granted who you are. We
we don't want to become overly familiar with a God we hardly know, God. And so, Holy Spirit, we humble ourselves tonight to, to hear from your word. We are hungry, we are thirsty. We thank you, Father. We, we once again invite you, uh, come and do what you do best. Invade our hearts, the rooms that we are in. Invade with your kingdom, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Um, John, thank you for leading us in that beautiful time of worship. Uh, Hey, you guys are ready to hear from God's word? If you are, give me a big amen in the chat section if you are ready. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, if you are ready to hear from the word of God. Uh, Suhas, so uh, do you mind turning on your video so I can add you to the spotlight if that's okay? Thank you. All right, so uh, a guest of honor, a speaker for tonight is uh, none other than Suhas himself. Uh, if you don't know Suhas, um, yeah, we should probably deal with you later. <laughs> but uh, uh, Suhas, uh, I mean, when I just think of him, he is Mr. Consistent for me. Uh, he goes after people unapologetically. Uh, he is Mr. Passion. Uh, he's the man, the myth, the legend. Um, and uh, I've learned so much from you, Suhas. And to so many people that I've spoken to, uh, one of the first things that they say is, you were the first person that they came in contact with when they came to church. Um, and so thank you for just being that wonderful, wonderful person that you are. We are so excited. To, uh, to hear what God's got to say, speak through you. Um, so, Mike is yours, the floor is yours. Over to you, Suhas. Thank you. Thanks, Roshan. That was really sweet. Uh, and yeah, it helps to be in the Connect team if you want to be the first person that people meet in church. Um, so, uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Suhas. And, uh, I'm, I'm married. I have a wife, Pri Pritika. She's also on this call. And um, we uh, serve and worship at APC. Um, now, like all of you, uh, all of us, I, I, and the reason actually I chose this topic was that I think all of us have gone through a pretty tough time over the last two years, right? It's been really crazy just looking at, um, at the way things panned out over the last two years. Nobody even expected a pandemic to hit us like this. Um, and there was so much loss and chaos and sickness. And um, and I think people have, have really struggled through this time. So the topic I felt was that staying alive is a, uh, would be relevant considering the fight that we've gone through. Um, and I'm sure each of you dealt with it differently. Uh, I wanted to get a quick view of what your experience of the pandemic was, right? So I'm gonna do a quick menti activity, okay? Uh, I don't know if everyone here is over familiar or just familiar or not familiar at all with menti, but if you log on to menti.com and enter the code, uh, I'd like you to answer this question. What did you do to stay alive during this pandemic, okay? Um, you can select all of the options, many of the, the options that apply. Basically, look at what are the options that apply for you. It's not just a one thing that you can select. You can select all of them too, right? And then let's just see. Uh, uh, it'd be great to see what people's responses are. So, um, all right, go ahead and start responding. I will also show the responses that we're seeing on the empty slide. And if, um, I think there's also a direct link. I'll also ping the direct link. Give me a second. So can you just give us a code again? I mean, 
So within yeah. the yeah, I'm giving the direct link also, and I will put this up. Okay, oh, I see a lot of people are responding. Okay, so this gives me an average view of what people have been doing. So uh, a lot of people picked up new hobbies. A lot of people learned to cook. That's great. Okay. Um, and developed a new skill. Okay, read more books. Okay. Okay, so I'm seeing the top four are probably, oh, binge watch TV shows and movies is competing with uh, among the top three right now. Well, it's amazing to see that some of you have shared the gospel with the lost. That's, that's great. I hope all of you are being honest though. Okay. All right, so, so that's great. So top three are what? Picked up new hobbies, binge watched TV shows and movies, and prayed for the sick. Prayed for the sick has really become, um, has, has become the top one right now. Okay, that's awesome. So, so thanks for sharing that. Um, I was actually, <laughs> uh, unlike you all, uh, I, I've not stepped out of the house for a long time. We've been staying safe. Um, and for those of you who know me, you know that I've been extremely active in church. Uh, I love serving in church and um, would always look at different ways that I could serve in the church community. Um, but uh, with the pandemic, it kind of, um, um, it, it took away that opportunity. And so, I felt like I was out of a job. I was essentially put in a place where um, on Sundays were free days for me and I had to figure out what do I do during these days now. Um, so I thought, okay, let me, um, let me relax. Let me take care of my health. Let me take care of my family. Let me uh, watch some Netflix. I picked up some new shows that we were watching. Um, and and I just got a lot of rest during this time, right? Um, and so over the last two years um, and, and uh, during the second wave, our life group had actually come together and we were talking about, okay, how is this pandemic really hit you? And, and this was when it was at its peak. Um, so I, I went first, I shared with the group about how um, for me, the experience was that um, it was very positive. I, uh, uh, the, the, the situation was very positive for me. Uh, with the pandemic hitting us, uh, we were asked to work from home. So I didn't have to go through my long drives to office. Um, I could uh, spend more time with the family. I could uh, I get some exercise. I could um, do whatever needed to be uh, done at home. I could manage things at home better because I was I was at home, right? And so I shared all of this and I was talking about how my biggest concerns at that time, because uh, groceries uh, were running out of stock and it was always an issue to get groceries. Um, and uh, I, I was talking about how that was probably my biggest issue at that point. And um, I finished, I handed it over to the next person. I look at my wife's face and she's in absolute shock. She like looking at me in horror saying, what did you just say? And then I was like, okay, what happened? Why is she so shocked? Uh, and, I, and as the other shared, um, it really helped me, it really hit me how oblivious I was to the suffering around me. Because people are talking about how uh, their families and friends were uh, really struggling during this time. And that's when I realized how selfish I've been. Um, I've become so focused on me, my family, and I didn't realize how much more there was for me to be looking at. While I was aware of what's happening around, uh, my immediate focus became me and my family, right? Um, 
and and then I started thinking, okay, about how can I start giving and how can I uh, start helping others during this time. So I thought that uh, it'll be good for us to reflect on what happened during this pandemic because it's, it's a reminder of something that we've gone through. And so I, I thought let's just talk about what happened. Uh, Essentially, with the uh, uh, pandemic hitting the world, there was, of course, a lot of physical health issues, and the total number of people who were um, who contracted the virus was about 233 million people. Okay, and out of these uh, 4.7, 4.8 million, close to 4.8 million people were reported as deaths cases through this. Uh, and what's what's crazy is that. This is actually not the accurate number because a lot of countries were not uh, tracking and reporting, like India, a lot of countries were not tracking and reporting their death cases um, accurately. And the actual number was about 7.1 million people who died during the, the pandemic. Um, apart from the physical health issues, there were also mental health issues. Um, <clears throat> Harvard actually did a research study and they found that uh, people, young people especially, who reported feeling lonely uh, frequently almost all of the time or most of the time was about 36%. And that was an increase of about 11% from what they had seen before the pandemic started. Uh, out of this, uh, they saw that 61% of the group were young people between the age of 16 to 25. Uh, years of age, right? And they also saw that 63% uh, of young people reported symptoms of anxiety and depression. So physical health, mental health was affected. It led to a financial crisis, right? Uh, the, it led to uh, some of the biggest industries and our eight core sectors in India being affected where um, the industrial output dropped by about 5.2%. And this led to financial losses of the organizations. It led to organizations actually uh, downsizing and therefore uh, what, what was found was that 81 million jobs were lost in Asia Pacific, right? Um, in India alone, what uh, was reported was that uh, the unemployment rate increased, was at 45 year high. And this led to even um, undernourished people, and, and they were predicting that under, uh, uh, malnourishment or undernourishment would increase by 20% in a year. And this was essentially established as the worst situation that India has ever faced in the last 14 years. Um, apart from this, it was, uh, it was also affecting families. Um, there was a report by the UN Women that said that 243, more than 243 million women and girls between the ages of 15 and 19 experience sexual or physical violence. So um, through all of this, it, it, I, I realized, and after I went through this, I realized that the sad part is there are a lot of people who are living in their own bubble uh, and not really understanding the suffering around us, right? Um, and for me, I didn't realize it because it wasn't so close to home. I didn't have immediate family members who were affected by the virus, so uh, who were struggling because of this. And so, uh, our tendency is to to only understand and process what's around us. And we live in a world where we're taught to take care of ourselves first. Um, if you go in a flight, they always say put on your own mask first uh, and then help the uh, person next to you, right? Uh, so we live in a world where self-care and um, self-love is glorified. And that tends to become our sole focus. Now, now that doesn't mean that we don't take care of ourselves. And, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we shouldn't take care of ourselves. We shouldn't uh, look at our um, COVID-19 protocols and maintain social distance and stay safe. Uh, we shouldn't, I'm not saying that we shouldn't take care of our mental health, but I'm saying that we have to come to a point where we look beyond ourselves and we have to be able to look at what's happening around us. Um, 
And and what I wanted to really share about today is about a pandemic which is worse than this. Um, is anyone aware of a pandemic which was worse than what we've seen? You can unmute and answer. I don't know if people are typing in chat, but uh, I'm on screen share. Give me a second, let me see. Okay, I'm not able to get off screen share. Uh, yeah, so you can unmute and talk about any other pandemics that you'll have seen, which is worse than this. Anyone thing that you're aware of? Also? Some are oh. responding in the chat section, so us. Oh, okay. Can you read one of the responses? I can't seem to get off. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. No problem. Yeah. Um, a couple of them have said no, they have not. Um, Benjamin says the Black Plague, uh, okay. Depression, Sark, S A A R C, Sark, um, Dying Souls, Spanish yeah. Flu. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Roshan. Yeah, a lot of that is true. I mean, there were pandemics in the past which were worse than this. And I liked one of the responses that came in. Um, there is a, a pandemic which has been ongoing um, and it's, it's been worse than any of the diseases that we've seen. Uh, it's highly contagious, has been spreading for thousands of years and it's passed on from generation to generation and it has a fatality rate of about 70% and the remaining 30% get infected but they're saved and they're healed. Um, and each of us have been infected by this virus. And there's only uh, one vaccine that can save us from this, right? Uh, so I'm referring to sin. And we've all struggled with sin. We've all gone through this, uh, this uh, the suffering of sin. But we have what a lot of people don't even know of, a vaccine called Jesus, right? Uh, and Jesus is the only way that people can be saved from this pandemic. And that's, that's uh, a pandemic that we don't talk about enough. Uh, it's a spiritual pandemic, which is, um, which is causing eternal death. And it's worse than what we're seeing right now. And all of this thing that I spoke about were really tragic, but um, the fact that there are so many people, and, and when I saying 70%, that's because 30% uh, of the world um, have been, uh, according to a survey, they're, they're, they're Christians. Uh, and the, the rest of 70% aren't. Now, even of these 30, 30 percent, a lot of people may call themselves Christian, but may not even live as Christian. So are we really um, looking at creating a world where people know Jesus, right? And we are in a time where um, wars are raging, pandemics are at large, political and uh, upheavals have become so common and uh, suppression and persecution of Christians has been rising. And we're clearly, we're very clearly living in the end times, right? So we need to live with a sense of urgency right now. Um, I'm gonna ask someone, anyone from the group to read uh, First Peter 4, was seven to ten, and preferably the NIV version if you have it. Okay, I'll pull it up for you in case you forgot to bring your Bible. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Okay, thanks, thanks, John. <clears throat> uh, so, I'd like all of you all, you don't have to unmute yourselves, but uh, if you all can read this with me this time, right? Uh, I'm going to repeat it again and read it slowly so all of us can read it together. Okay, it says the end of all things is near. Um, 
Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Right? Um, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Now, what it says, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. It doesn't say eat. It says, it's essentially talking about us giving to others. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So we've been blessed with so much that God has given us. We're, we know the truth. We know about something that is available uh, to change the world, to change the way we live. Um, and with these four principles, we can be um, we can be people who can bring hope to, to the world, right? In a world that's dying, in a world that's, um, that's suffocating with sin, and uh, a world where people are so consumed by themselves that they, um, they don't know that there's something beyond this life. We have we have the opportunity to make an impact on people's lives. And I know that quite often we, we need to go through our own personal spiritual journey. We need to look at how do we build our families, spiritual growth, but that needs to be an outlet into other people's lives. Um, and we should use that to fuel our purpose here, which is here, uh, here on earth to serve others. Um, does anyone uh, here watch Chosen? Um, and okay, I'm a huge fan of Chosen. Um, I just finished watching the series that they had released, uh, the second season. And there's a question that Jesus asked his mother, uh, Mary, throughout uh, multiple times in the series. Um, he asked us, the same question over and over, but when I watched the, the last episode of the second season, it really hit home uh, when he said this. Um, because this is this topic that we're talking about today has been playing on my mind for a long time now. Um, and it's, Jesus is just uh, what they've, they're essentially depicting is the scene where Jesus is about to go preach uh, the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, Mary speaking to him, <clears throat> and he reminds her of this thought. Uh, it's basically saying, "If not now, when?" Right? And I, I believe that that's a message for all of us. Um, I think there's a we we tend to think that okay, we've got more time, we've we've got enough time to do all of this, uh, but there is a need for us to be. Uh, to realize that we're living in a dying world and that we need to care for those around us. So we need to uh, share the gospel with uh, those around us. We need to give, we need to uh, love, we need to serve. Um, and, and that's the only way we can um, be able to fulfill the purpose that God has given us. Okay. So, so let's pray and then I'll hand this back to Roshan. Lord, I thank you uh, for this time, Lord. I thank you for bringing us together and I thank you for your word that reminds us and teaches us that we are here to serve you and to lead people to you, Father. I pray that um, we will use the gifts you've given us. We will um, we will know that there's so much more to life than just going through it. And that everything that we have will be given to glorify your name, honor and worship you, Jesus. We pray for each person here, Lord, and we pray for them in their areas of need and their, um, the areas where we need to grow spiritually, Lord. And I pray, Father, that we will be fueled by your word, by your spirit, by your power to take your 
your name to the ends of the earth, Lord. And we will remember that you've positioned us and placed us in a specific time at a specific um, at a specific workplace with specific people, Lord, so that we can make an impact on their lives, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you will open our eyes to opportunities that we have to tell them about you. Thank you, Father, for, for your grace and your mercy and your goodness. We love you, we worship you and praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Christian, back to you. Thank you. Hey, uh, thank you, Suhas. Hey, can we just give Suhas a big God bless you in the chat section, please? I just show him some love. Thank you, Suhas. Thank you for that beautiful reminder. Um, yeah. I actually don't know what to say, but um, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, uh, for joining in. I just go to the regular view. Thank you all. Thank you for joining in. And I hope uh, this kind of uh, um, encourages us, uh, motivate, uh, motivates us to uh, just live this one life that we have uh, for Jesus. You know, the world says you have one life, do whatever you want to do with it. Uh, but uh, the kingdom says we have one life, live it for Jesus and go all out. If not now, then when? If not you, then who? Right. Um, so I hope that this word encourages uh, each and every one of us. Okay, let's live life for Jesus. Uh, thank you all for joining in. Um, just uh, like a small announcement, I think uh, something exciting is coming our way. It will be out soon, so looking forward to that. Um, yeah, but that's about it. Okay, so thanks guys, thanks for joining in. Thank you for taking um, your Friday evening off and, uh, and joining us. Okay, thank you, God bless you all. Uh, one more time, Suhas, thank you so much thank um, you. Yeah, for sharing, for bringing this beautiful reminder. Thank you. Thanks for yeah. inviting me. Yeah, my pleasure. Good night, guys. Take care. Uh, have a lovely weekend ahead. I'll see you in church if you're coming to Central the Sunday. Okay. See you guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.